What's up, Meta-Nerds? This video is all about the IF-120 landing craft, also known as the Imperial Landing Force Ship. It was manufactured by Steinar Fleet Systems, the same people that produced the TIE lineup, as well as the Lambda and Sentinel-class shuttles that inspired this design. It was sold to the Empire at a cost of 290,000 credits, nearly the cost of 5 TIE Fighters, or 2 X-Wings, which is surprisingly low, considering that it was only 50k more than a Lambda, even though it was much larger and better armed. It came with double medium laser cannons, capable of taking out armored vehicles and other starfighters, along with four anti-personnel heavy blaster cannons. Its thick plate armor and shielding protected its complement of 12 speeder bikes, two LAVR QH-7 chariots, which was an armored mobile command speeder, along with a PX-4 mobile command base, a vehicle that was a lot like a shrunken down version of the Juggernaut. Its name came from the fact that it could carry 120 troops, but it also had a 130 ton cargo capacity, a weight equal to 160 dewbacks. And if all that wasn't enough, it could hit top atmospheric speeds of 800 kilometers per hour, or 497 miles per hour, making it just slower than a TIE bomber, while also having a class 1 hyperdrive, the same type found in an A-wing. Put all these stats together, and you can see how the Empire could use the IF-120 to rapidly deploy forces across the galaxy. It could travel through hyperspace at speeds that were only beat by a Nubian yacht, and highly customized ships like the Slave 1 and Millennium Falcon, and once it landed on World, all of the vehicles in its complement were designed to be able to hold an area as an Imperial base, while also being mobile enough to elude or pursue enemy forces. The PX-4 mobile command bases would be unfazed by the lighter arms that were used by most of the subjugated species of the galaxy, while the chariots could be protected by the incredibly fast speeder bikes that acted as recon units which could also pack a punch. Imperial efficiency drilled troopers to quickly offload supplies, vehicles, and troops, allowing for the IF-120 to head back to some far-off Imperial base, resupply, and then shuttle another batch in to stop the rebellion. If the Empire decided that a single trip could do, the landing craft itself was also designed to operate as a mobile command base. In this scenario, the IF would operate as the main command facility, with the PX-4 now becoming the forward base, working in concert with the chariots, while relaying all of this data back to the ship, which could then be sent to Imperial higher-ups at any location in the galaxy, via its powerful communications array. As for its history, the ship was created later in the Galactic Civil War, as a response to the dozens of smaller factions that tested the Emperor's strength following the destruction of the first Death Star. At least one of them survived the Empire itself, when, after the Battle of Endor, Imperial Captain Drezzle was in possession of this ship and its complement during his subjugation of the world's Soul V. He hoped to weaponize the native's crystal-based power grid to bring the Empire back to its former glory, but Han Solo would end up inadvertently destroying the city, taking out all the Imperial Remnant forces left there, along with this ship, and Captain Drezzle. So that's it for its history, and some really cool behind the scenes facts, is that it was introduced in the comic Star Wars 84, Soul Searching, which was released back in 1984, before being put into the popular game Galaxy at War. The city's soul is spelled the same way as Seoul, South Korea, and the only thing that is perhaps off about these stats, is its ability to carry a PX4 mobile command base. In some pictures it looks possible, but in the original comic version, it looks to be about the same size as the PX-4, definitely making it impossible to carry all those ships that were supposed to be in its complement. So that's it for the IF-120 landing craft, but most important of all, remember, when fighting hostile locals, always make sure you have a mobile base, and the Force will be with you. Always.